Tyler and bring up. Uh, T Jump and Nightclaw, I need you guys to raise your hand and that little hand icon so I can bring you up to the stage. And Nightclaw, I'll be posting your slides here in a separate chat. It will be titled Sources, and I will also put a thread for it in the side. And you guys will both be able to use this chat as well. <clears throat> All right. I think actually <clears throat> All right, T-Jump, I'm bringing you up to the stage. Nightclaw, hit the uh, hand icon when you get a chance. Also, T-Jump, can you hear us? Okay. Nice to meet you, T-Jump. Thank you for coming in. Also, if you have the structure for everything. Yeah, I got the time. All right. Oh man. Okay. Uh, bring up my thought though, like. Yeah, there we go. Nightclock, there's a channel called Main Sources, but unfortunately, only Joe can give permission to actually have us put e uh, images in there. So we're gonna have to resort to a different kind of. Can Wait, you lock, lock, lock by any general chance? chat? Lock general chat, and then just put it in general chat. Yeah, that's genius. But um, <clears throat> before I do that, uh, Nightclock, do you have any way to stream your actual screen, or kind of go through these slide by slide? Because I don't have access to that channel to give. Uh, uh, to no, the only thing I can just do is this, on the camera. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. But then I got to keep switching to server to server, which is, is there a way you can just like put it in, as you said, general chat and just lock or lock, actually put it in a, just a main chat and lock it or just create it. Can you create a new chat for the time being? Just put that in there and lock. Let's see if that's possible. I'm just giving that for people to see in case they want to look at it. So they have a source. I'd rather have that there. So. All right. Um, <clears throat> I'm actually going to go ahead and put it in a chat called poetry. Can everybody just make sure that you guys have that available? I'm going to put it here for a T jump. Just tag you guys with the channel. If I don't see a poetry chat. You don't see a tag that I gave you? Oh, I gave it. Yeah, I see. I see. It. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, you know. Okay. So you're gonna put that in there. I'm gonna just I'll use the bathroom. I'll be right back. Okay. Sure. No problem. Okay. Bathroom mid debate is crazy. <laughs> <clears throat> all right guys i'll be putting the actual chat itself in the side here if you want to actually take a look at his contents So Nyclot's content and works will be in this actual channel right here in the side chat. Mm. 
<clears throat> okay, cool. Let me see it. Yeah, everything's cool. All right. Perfect. Um, <clears throat> Ashraf, I'll let you go ahead and begin. And everyone, make sure to please also share the debate with everybody. There's going to be go ahead and get started. statements. Um, I don't know if we decided if Nightclaw or uh, T-Jump's going to go first. You want me okay, to yeah, so first? I mean, yeah, T-Jump can go first 12 minutes uh, whenever you're ready, T-Jump. I thought he wanted an eight minute one. Does he want me to go first or him to go first? Okay, cool. Then oh, yeah, go, go, ahead. go first. Okay, so what I noticed here was a not really an argument, just a bunch of assertions without anything backing it up. So for mine, on the other hand, I'm going to have a very strict argument that justifies my position. It's not based on external observation or scientific theorizing. It's grounded in direct reflection, basic idea specifically a phenomenological argument that moves by apodictic certainty, eidetic necessity, and a formal a priori structure. So the first premise is consciousness is apodictically certain. And basically what this means is consciousness just gives itself directly, doesn't need an inference, it appears immediately in reflection. So any act of doubting, any questioning already presupposes consciousness. Consciousness is not something you can get behind, it's the condition for anything to show up at all. Thus consciousness is apodictically certain, it cannot be coherently denied. That's the starting point. So once you start with consciousness, the next premise is going to be that consciousness necessarily has intentionality. So if consciousness is apodictically certain, then consciousness necessarily has intentionality. And this is known through eidetic variation. So when I perceive a tree, the act is directed towards perceiving the tree. When I imagine unicorn, I am you know, having my act of imagination towards this unicorn. When I remember a birthday party, I'm going to have my act of consciousness directed towards this birthday party. So when we understand in any act of consciousness, there's always gonna be the structure of I think a thought. And so that aboutness or that directedness of thought is what is called intentionality. And so the next one is consciousness transcends spatial extension. And the structure is if consciousness necessarily has intentionality, then consciousness necessarily transcends spatial extension. So the idea is basically this. If I'm going to understand the act of intentionality and the ego cogito cogitatum structure, the act of intentionality itself uh, is not spatially located, extended, uh, anywhere. It is the field by which objects that are spatiotemporal appear in. So when I perceive the tree, sure, the tree is spatiotemporal, but the act of perceiving the tree itself is not. That act of perception is not something that is spatially located. Now, if that's the case, consciousness would be irreducible to physical causality, because if consciousness transcends spatial extension, then consciousness necessarily is irreducible to physical causality because physical causality depends on spatial extension. Collisions, transmissions, and reactions require spatial proximity and measurable relations. Thus, by its nature, consciousness uh, transcends space. So as you can see here, I have four just major points. Consciousness is apodictically certain. It necessarily has intentionality. It necessarily transcends spatial extension. Thus, it's necessarily reducible to physical causality. As you can see, what I've posted as well, uh, it is valid. Everything follows the modus ponens type structure. And I have terms defined as well that explains things. So I'm going to structure this debate and I've actually presented an argument. T-Jump has it. And I'm going to keep looping back to my argument, my premises. So I'm going to ask him, uh, which specific premise do you deny in that? Do you deny uh, consciousness is apodictically certain? The intentional structure of consciousness? That intentionality transcends spatial extension? or it's irreducible to physical causality. So if we could, um, we can do that. I am done, go ahead. All right, yeah, so, so, minute rebuttal, minute uh, so we can skip all that and just do open conversation.
Um, so his main argument, the only thing that was coherent, most of it was just complete gibberish and a waste of time, uh, was that intentionality is not spatio-temporal. It doesn't exist in space or time. If it doesn't exist in space or time, it doesn't exist. Like all neurologists, cognitive scientists, philosophy minds agree intentionality exists in space and time. It's pretty much a fact. We know where it is in the brain. We can shut it on and shut it off with damaging parts of your brain. There's no part of that that is in any way coherent that he thinks that it's not spatio-temporal. It's just kind of a dumb argument. So if that's all he's got, then refuted, game over, your argument is done. Um, but that was the only argument I heard that had any value to it. Next. Okay, I didn't see any argument at his point. It's just basically a bunch of assertions. So if you're telling me the only thing that exists is physical, do you have an actual argument for that? Because my argument shows that that's not the case. First of all, I'm going to ask you, how do you define, how do you understand physical? So for me, on the other hand, given my phenomenological um, starting point, I'm going to understand physical, which is that under space, time, and causation. So when my consciousness experiences reality, and it's going to experience things as being spatially extended, having temporal duration, and there's going to be causal properties. So this is a conceptual schema that I operate under to understand what's physical. So could you please tell me how you understand physical? Give me a strict conceptual analysis as i've done as well so what is physical to you matter and energy okay so is matter spatially extended yep okay is energy spatially extended as well most of it okay so this being the case if you look at my argument uh, the whole idea is consciousness has intentionality to it the intentional structure transcends spatial extension you haven't actually dealt with that could you please i literally my did as far as the so I, that was literally the one thing I did address. And it doesn't seem like you are intellectually capable of understanding words very well. So I'll say it again. Okay. Do you understand Your what intentionality Your only is argument was that intentionality is not spatio-temporal. That was the very beginning of my rebuttal. And then I said, there is no evidence of this. This is something you've made up. You pulled it out of your ass. No evidence okay. of this. And then okay, I went so, on to say, in hold all on, hold fields, on, you're being too a little bit yet. more. I'm not done yet. In all fields hey, Mac, uh, related to the brain, okay. neurology, psychology, philosophy of mind, cognitive science, every single one of these fields concludes that intentionality is a part of the brain that we can damage and destroy and control and manipulate such as Phineas Gage, who had the rod shot through his brain and lost the ability to do impulse control and intentionality. There is no evidence that it has no spatio-temporal magic qualities. In order to provide evidence, you would need to show there isn't another kind of ontology outside of physical reality, which you haven't done. You just said, oh, it can't be physical. Ooh, not evidence. You would need to provide this new ontology and then provide novel testable predictions this new ontology makes and then show intentionality is somehow tied to this new ontology. None of this have you provided. All you did is say, intentionality is outside of space-time, like magic leprechauns. Okay. What I said. It's pretty much exactly I mean, what you said, you, actually. No, you're caricaturing my argument. First of all, to even have testable predictions, you would understand you need to have a consciousness that perceives reality, correct? Yes, I agree. Well, okay, not really. Great. Well, no, so, sort of. Well, okay, do, so yes or no? Do you need a consciousness? Do you need a consciousness to perceive reality to even have science in the first place? Do you need no. a human observer that has a conscious no, agent? That's just that, stupid. Okay, so okay, so you're telling me that someone can have knowledge without having consciousness. Uh, we have computers that can do tests and do science on their own with no consciousness. That's a thing. We've already discovered that. It's not so do it, does a person have to know the computer and has to perceive nope. the computer and nope. be aware of it? No. Nope. So you're basically saying that you can have, what does this have knowledge. To do with with, it has to do with the argument because the starting point for me is consciousness. So do you, okay, because here's can why the hypocrisy. Consciousness. Hold on, I didn't interrupt you. Stop. So the idea is this, even you in your debate with Godless Girl, when asked what you're starting That has was, nothing to do with this said, topic. No, it does. It does. It does. It's relevant because you said, I think, therefore I am. So you were starting with consciousness as an oh absolute certainty of knowledge. Were you doing that? Yes or no? Okay. Let's go back to the topic now. So. Okay. No, I no, we are going to go. So no, are you going to deny talk about another Are you going to deny consciousness? Because so it shows they're inconsistent. Stop talking, it just stop shows talking, you're throwing shit out there talking, and not dealing with it. Stop talking. I'm, not, I'm stop saying, talking, do you deny consciousness talking, as a starting point stop, of knowledge? Yes or no? Talking. So the argument I said. Okay, I'm not going to let you frame control this stuff. Do you deny I've muted you on my end. I can no longer hear what you're saying. You have been muted. So now my audience can hear what I'm saying. No one can hear what you're saying. So the argument that Nyclot made was that time, that 
intentionality is outside of space time. This is just inanely stupid. Now I said, provide evidence of this. And all he's done is try to like bring up other debates and topics about consciousness. Like, okay, well, what is the evidence that intentionality is outside of space time? You can mute me on all your right, end. I'm muted. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, look, you can be a coward in this. Which specific premise do you disagree? Okay, I muted you again. I'm going to mute you anytime until you answer my question. Because all I really care about is the answer to my question. What is your evidence that intentionality is outside of space-time? Go ahead. Okay, can moderators control this? If this is a crossfire, is this just going to be T-Jump engaging in a monologue? Or is he going to actually basically... I'm asking I have you a question and I'm waiting for the question. He doesn't Come answer go, mine. Go, go, go. I've specifically said this here. I have an Last argument. Chance. He has not refuted any premise. The Five, premise has been hit by the threshold four, of sufficiency. Three, Eidetic necessity. Two, Every single premise is goodbye. either...